Hello YouTube, Patrick here with Homebred Aquatics. So today we're going over the top five things you do wrong when trying to sell fish. All right, number one, asking too much money for your fish. Listen people, they're not gonna pay store price. Stores aren't gonna pay store price. People aren't going to pay store price. You might get away with that with online, but that comes with its whole other slew of overhead costs and risks involved. Asking too much. Now, I would do you a disservice if I didn't tell you what you should be asking. If stores are buying your stuff, at least a third to a quarter of what they sell it for. They have to make their profit. They have overhead costs that we don't have. If it's to other people in the community, half the cost of what the store typically sells them for. Unless they're a very, very difficult species, like these little demons over here. But that is what you're gonna get out of them. I am sorry to tell you, um, but don't go to the fish store and be like, I have this special fish, it's $25, you're never gonna find it. The store's not gonna pay for it. People are probably not gonna pay for it. Your best bet is if you want the best bang for your buck, go online and sell it online. All right, number two, breeding the wrong stuff. Uh, this one bugs me too, but what I mean by breeding the wrong stuff is breeding stuff that doesn't sell. I'll give you a prime example in history of me. I bred shell dwellers for a long time. These guys bred like crazy. Did I sell them every once in a while? Yes. But you know what sat for longer than ever that I don't care if I brought them to the fish store for two bucks a piece. They just wouldn't buy them. They didn't need them. They wouldn't sell them. They weren't a good seller. Here or online or to people out in town, it just, it just didn't. So why hold on to them so long? It's things like this with like convict cichlids and a lot of cichlids, I just go down that pattern of cichlids, but there's a lot of fish like this. Do your research. Look at the fish store, see how long it sits there for. If they get these fish in and they've been sitting there for months, what does that tell you? Is it a thing you should probably breed? How about breed the thing that sells all the time, that you know people are buying, that you know people want, that aren't this like oddity in a tank. And, and it, like cichlids, if it breeds like crazy, you gotta get rid of those some way or another, eventually. And you're either giving them away or you're keeping them. So keep that in mind. Number three, ask before you breed. Well, well, what do I mean by that? What I mean is go to the local fish store. If you're breeding and you're going to likely have excess of something, ask them what they would like you to breed especially if it's like a specific strand of something or, or something a little weird, ask them, run it across them. Hey, would you buy this? Um, and if so, you know, uh, you guys pay this much for it. Would you take this many? Ask them how many they would generally buy. If it's something that's in demand in the area, ask the questions. Local fish stores generally like to deal with local people um, but you just can't bring them crap. Just to say it nice, can't bring them crap. You gotta bring them something they need, they want, and they can sell. That's just what it is. And what better way than get your extroverted boots on, get those on, and walk over there and start up a healthy conversation. All right, number four. Selling to the wrong store. Uh, but Patrick, selling to the wrong store? Yes, selling to the wrong store. Corporations won't buy your fish. It's as easy as that. 
franchises typically won't buy your fish. Keep that up here. You don't even go in there and ask a question. You look a little silly sometimes. I worked for Petco for about a year and a half. Um, I've been with many other pet stores. Don't go in there to a Petco or a PetSmart and try to sell them your fish. They work with specific vendors that are a thousand times bigger than we are that can produce thousands of times more fish than we can. They're, they, they're not working with you. And I've even seen it on the franchise level, which like multi stores in the area, they work in the same exact way where they're dealing with very specific vendors and they're only buying from them. They're, they don't even, they don't even consider us. And that's okay. Not every fish store is for us, but know who to sell to. Not corporations, probably not franchises, but your local fish stores, your mom and pops, they want to buy from us. Number five, diversify a little bit, please. Now, I, we all have our specialties. I have certain things that I'm very, very good at and I'm not the best at. But diversify what you do. If it's that you just kind of, all you ever do is guppies, get into plants or get into plecos or get into something else that draws people in. That makes stores want to buy more than just one thing from you. That if you open up an online store, gives you more range. Even if that's products or goods or 3D printing, fish tank stuff, diversify what you do. If you are trying to be a dedicated fish breeder, have more than one type of thing. Uh, gosh, do as much as you can. I do nearly 40 species of fish here and 30 different types of plants. I, I don't even know, I'm throwing them off the top of my head, but I do a lot. And that's what brings people into my home, and that's what brings people ooing and aahing on buying a little bit of everything here and there. Imagine if you went into a fish store and all they ever sold was guppies. They, exactly, you can imagine that. So, my point being, have diversity, okay? Please implement these. All right, guys, appreciate it. Bye.